Welcome back to this series where we build a RESTful service with Node.js. We added a lot of functionality, we added authentication, and I'd call our service finished right now. You can always tweak it, you can always improve it, and definitely share any tweaks, additions, or alternatives you created in the comment section. In this video, I want to have a look at one improvement that certainly makes sense. So let's dive right into it and see which improvement that is. As I mentioned, you can do a lot of things, but one thing I want to bring your attention to are our route files. If we have a look at them, you see they're relatively big. Now, obviously not super big, everything's fine, we can leave them as they are, but we could also argue that in the route files, we in the end just want to distribute our requests. We want to tell them where to go, right? We want to tell our get request targeted at just slash products to go somewhere where this code runs. That code itself doesn't necessarily be, uh, have to be a part of that routes file. So therefore I will add a new folder in the API folder and I'll name it controllers. And therefore we will get closer to an MVC approach, though the V, the view is of course missing because it's a restful service, we don't render a view. But at least on the back end, we have our models. We created these with Mongoose. And then we have our controllers where the actual logic should live. And that will allow us to create cleaner route files. So now I could create our orders.js file here too. And the idea is simple. I want to export a couple of functions here in the orders.js uh, files that in the end just are the same functions as I pass to my router here. So for example, for getting all orders, I can grab that function, which I pass to my get method here, like this, and cut it out of there, out of my get route, and go to the orders.js file, and there I now want to export it. Now to export it, I'll add exports, and then a name of which, under which I want to export this, and here I'll name it order get, uh, orders get all maybe, and assign this function as a value. And that's actually almost all. Now there's one thing. Of course, I need to get access to the order here. So I will take the order import from Mongoose and copy that and put it into my orders controller here like this so that I can still use my order here. With that added here, I can go back to my route, the orders.js route, and import my controller. So I can import the orders controller from, and now let's go up and then to the controllers folder and the orders file. And now I can simply assign orders controller dot orders get all here as a function. I don't execute it, don't pass parentheses, just a reference to that function telling the, the um, express basically, that it should execute this function this is pointing to whenever we receive an incoming request here. And uh, yeah, here yeah, I got an error because I worked too much on the front end. It's of course, const orders equ uh, controller equals require. We should use the Node.js import syntax. So let me save this. And let me also make sure that check off here is of course incorrect in the orders controller. That should stay in the route file. This still is my extra check I'm executing here in the middleware. Now if that, if I save this, it should work. And now if I send a request to orders again, I get off failed. So if I do quickly authenticate and I grab that token here and now use that new token instead of the old one from the last recording session. If I now send this, this still works. So we're still able to get all the orders now through the controller. Keep in mind what I accidentally messed up, but good thing I guess, that the check off middleware stays in the routes file. You could of course also change your controller to also kind of expose that, but I guess Adding the middleware directly here makes sense. So you can easily see, okay, any request reaching that route goes through that middleware and then ultimately is handled by this function here in my orders controller. And this is how we, well, can set this up and now we get a very clean 
route file at least once we did this for all the routes. So now I will grab the next one here. This is the route for uh, creating a new order. So in the orders JS file, in the controller file, I will now add this and export this as a function too. So I named this one orders get all here. I'll name it orders create order maybe. Assign this function as a value, the one I just grabbed from the routes file. There I also use the product model and not just the order model. So I will import that too. I will import product while require models product to get access to this too. And now in the orders JS file, I just want to add this here, orders controller, and then it's orders create order. Now if we test this in Postman, and I also will add my authorization header here. I'll copy the one I just used on the get request here. And I'll use this old product ID here, which hopefully works. If I now hit send here, I get product not found. So let me quickly grab all my products. Yeah, all failed, thanks very much. So let's add the off header here quickly too. Change this to a get request, and get all the products. Let me now grab this product ID and now try again by creating an order for this ID. I get an error. We have a look at the log. Mongoose is not defined. Yeah, makes sense, I guess, because here I'm creating a new object ID by accessing Mongoose types. So we should also add this import, which we have in the routes file. So let's also import Mongoose here in our controller. We need it here too. Now if I save this and send this again, now we stored the order. So now that is working too. And now to continue in our orders.js file here in the routes folder, we got our route for getting a single order. So I'll cut this code here too. Go to the orders controller and add this here. So I'll now have exports, orders, get order and assign this as a value. And we got all the imports we need for that. So all I now need to do is go to the routes file and assign orders controller and now orders get order. If I now save this and we try this out too in Postman, now I want to get a single order. Why not the order we just created? So let's copy the, the ID from that order and attach it here, orders ID, send a get request to it. Now we get that single order, so that's working too. And finally, for deleting, of course, I want to do the same, grab all that code, cut it, and go to the orders control controller, exports, orders, delete, order, and assign that value. Here again, I got everything I need. I got the order import already. So now in the orders file in the routes folder, I'll simply access orders controller, and then there it's the delete order. And with that, if we save that and we try, uh, try this too, so we delete this order. Now we got that deleted response. And now we get a very clean route file. Obviously we now got our crowded orders controller, but that is where the logic should live. And it makes it easier for us to understand the flow of our application of the incoming requests if we got a leaner route file. At least that is an alternative or an option you should think about. It also means that we can now remove all these imports like the order and product model, of course, and Mongoose. And I only need Express, Router, my middleware, which I still apply here, and of course, the controller. And now we can do the same for products and users. So I can add the products.js file in the controllers folder and in the products.js file here in the route folder, I will still, still leave the, uh, the Malter setup here and the file filter and everything here which is related to that Malter middleware. We could also outsource this into its own file if we wanted, but I'll leave it here and I'll now just grab that code for getting uh, a single uh, product and um, getting all products, excuse me, and put it into my products JS file. So there I'll also have exports, products, get all and assign this value. And now here we well have the logic to get all the products. I therefore also need that import 
from the product model in the products JS file now in that new controller file so that we have access to that model. And let's now try this out. First of all, of course, let's go back to the products file in the routes folder and let's import. So let's import our new products controller with the required syntax by going to the controllers folder and then importing that products file. And now we can use that products controller here on the get route. So here are the products controller with the products get all method we're pointing to. And now if we save this and we go back to Postman and send a get request to slash products, we get all the products. So this is working fine. Now the same of course for posting a new product, I'll leave the check off and the multer middleware in that routing file. I'll not put that into the controller. I'll just grab this function here, cut it out of the route file and create a new function which I export in my products controller file. I'll name this products create product here like this. In there, we now also again need to import mongoose to create that ID. So that is an import I'll get from my products.js file and add to the products.js file in the controllers folder like this. And now we should be able to create a new product. Let's try this out. Let me quickly send a new post request here. Let's add an authorization header to this post request. And in the body should be form data. Let's pick a fitting file and let's hit send. And make sense that we get not found. I should maybe also hook this up here in the products shares file in the routes folder. There for posting, I forgot to use my new controller function. So on the products controller, I want to forward requests to that function, the create product function. Now, if we save that and go back and try this same request again, it works. So now we successfully added that product. Now for getting a single product, Obviously, that's also something I want to do. So let me cut this code here and go to the products.js file here. And now it's exports products get product like this. Now back in the products file in the uh, routing folder, I'll use my products controller and use that get product function we just created. And now if I try to get a single product like the one we just created, so let me get this ID and set a get request to slash product slash that ID, then it still works, so that's fine. Now for patching a product, I'll of course do the same, copy or cut the code from the route file, add a new function in the controller, so exports, products, update, product would be a fitting name in my opinion, like this assign that function. We should have all the imports we need. Now um, point to that function in the routing file. So products controller update is the function I now want to call. And now we have this too. Now let's also add our delete function to our controller by exporting products delete and assigning this function here. We should all have all the exports we need here too. And now let's of course also point to that newly created function in the controller for this route too. And now we got a very clean and lean products routes file too. And as I said, you could also outsource all the multi related code here if you wanted to. Now, finally, let's create a new user JS file in the controllers folder where we manage all the logic for our user JS routes. So I'll copy or cut the code here for creating a new user and export it in the user JS file here. User sign up. Let's uh, refer to this code I just cut from the user JS file. Now we need bcrypt, we need uh, mongoose and I need the user model. I will actually copy all these imports because I will eventually need them here in my controller file. So I'll add them there. Now we should have everything we need. In the user JS file, I now need to import my controller. So const user controller is required. And now let's go to the controller controllers folder and import the user file. 
And then here for signing up, I can use my user controller and use the user sign up method, point to it, the method I just created. And with that, if we test this and we try to create a new user, so for that, don't forget, we need to pass an email and a password field. So if we try this out and I turn this into a post request to slash user slash sign up, can remove the content, uh, the, the authorization header, set content to application JSON though, to a raw data here, which is JSON, and then simply pass on email, which could be test55 at test.com and a password, whoops, like this password, which could be tester, and now hit send. I get not found because that should be user, not users. Now I get user created, so this works. And with that, let's also put the login functionality into the controller, so let's cut this and go back to the controller and export user login and assign this to the function I just cut and in the user JS file in the routes folder, I'll then point to this new controller function. So to the user login function. And now if we try this out here and send a post request to user login with that same data, I get off successful and a token. So this is working too. And now finally, let's grab that code for deleting a user. Let's put that into our controller too user delete it's pointing to that function. We need the user model, which we already are importing here. And in the user route, I can then also point to user controller, whoops, not delete, user delete like this. And now if we try to delete a user and we therefore quickly grab the ID of the user we just created and I then send a delete request to user slash with that ID and I hit send and I turn this into a valid ID maybe, then I get user deleted. So this also works. Now with that, I just recognized one tiny thing. We should also add the check off middleware in front of delete to prevent that unauthenticated users delete our users. So that would make sense. So let me quickly add check off here, which I require from my middleware folder, check off like this and let's simply add it here, check off. And now if I try this again and I first of all try to create a new user, so I post a new user here, whoops, user sign up of course, so I want to create a new one. Now if I grab that ID of the new user and I go back to my delete request and I try to delete that ID, I get all failed and I would first of all have to log in and delete it. And even then any user could delete another user. You would have to add some kind of authorization where you manage a different table in Mongoose where you assign roles or permissions to your users. That is something you can simply add to this application, but at least we got this basic protection against unauthenticated users. The core thing of that video, however, was that we create these controllers and we did. And now we have very lean routing files. And of course we can now clean these routing files up, remove user, chat bcrypt, mongoose from the user, JS file here, only leave the controller and the middleware, and of course express and router. And for products, it's the same. We no longer need the import to the product model there, so we can remove that. We can remove the mongoose import. We need multer still, and we need check off still though. And for orders, we already cleaned this up. So now this is all cleaned up. We got leaner route files now. We're using controllers to manage our logic there and to only manage routing and the route files, which I guess makes sense. And now it's up to you. You can enhance this application. You can try to add authorization. So try to manage different roles for different users. You can, of course, add other routes, other functionalities. You can exchange Mongoose with a MySQL database if you want. Lots of stuff there you can dive into. I hope you enjoyed this series and you learned a lot about how you can build a RESTful service with Node and Express.